Hey, good morning. Pete, North Las Vegas. Uh, I've been thinking about doing this for a lot of years and I, I finally decided, hey, I'm just, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to build an AR-308 platform and I decided to go with Frontier Armory. Um, they're a local brick and mortar here. They also do all their own machining work. So I figure if I run into any issues, I can, I can run down to the brick and mortar store and, uh, you know, figure out what needs to be done or what the fitment issues are. Also, um, going with New Frontier Armory on the upper and the lower uh, saved me some money over like Aero Precision and some of the other manufacturers. Uh, my lower is in background check jail. I should be hearing from them today. He said it's been taking about 24 hours to get the background done. So anyway, it's paid for. It's sitting down there just, just waiting for the green light. So anyway, I thought we would get into what I have learned about the AR-308 platform. Uh, like I said, I'm new to this platform and there's uh, some things to watch out for that I've learned already. So we'll get into that. Okay, so one of the things I've learned is there's four patterns for the 7.6251 or 308. Um, there's the Armalite, and that is referred to as the AR-10. Now, you're going to see a lot of people, uh, manufacturers even, just interchangeably calling uh, one pattern to the next and, and calling them the same thing. But AR-10 uh, generally means the Armalite pattern. And one of the ways you can tell uh, the Armalite pattern is back here on the receiver is a more angular cut. It's not radiused like this DPMS pattern. So that's one way to distinguish an Armalite. Now there's three different DPMS patterns. There's what's called the low rail version, which is the one I have here. And then they have the high rail version. And then uh, in recent years, they've come out with what's called a G2 pattern. And those upper and lower receivers more closely match the AR-15 platform. So once again, this is the low. Okay, so let's say you're getting ready to build a, an AR-308, which in my opinion is the correct terminology for what I'm about ready to build. And you don't know what receiver you have. How do you determine whether you actually have a low pattern or a high pattern receiver? Well, this tang right here, thickness, for the low version comes in at 0 0.150. And for the high version, it comes in at 0 0.210. And this is the other thing I'm learning about the 308 platform is there's <laughs> no real standardization. So you, you got to be kind of careful at, at what you're doing. Okay, so we'll take a quick measurement and um, I won't be able to get a good reading. This this comes because I'm holding the camera and doing it at the same time. But anyway, mine comes in at instead of an exact 0 0.150, it's coming in at about... Sorry about the camera work. If I get a good reading, it comes in at 0.155, so it's a little little bit oversized, a little bit thicker than, than what the low dimension is supposed to be. And then, like I said, if you have the high version uh, rail, that's going to read 0 0.210. So that's a quick way to determine uh, which, which DPMS pattern upper receiver you have. Okay, so we were talking about uh, low versus high on the receiver dimensions. Um, the reason you got to kind of watch out for that is your handguard selection. Um, if you put a high uh, handguard on a low receiver, your, your rail is going to stick up. It's not going to line up or vice versa. If you put a low on a, on a high, then your handguard is going to be sitting below your rail. Now, for example, um, as far as I can tell, Aero Precision, the M5 receivers upper are built to the high dimension. And as far as I can tell, their handguards only fit the, uh, the high dimension. And I couldn't figure out if they offered a low dimension. It doesn't look like they do. I sent them an email just to see if they offer handguards that will fit the, the low dimension receiver. Haven't heard back from them. And that was about two days ago. So I finally decided I'm probably not going to hear back from them. So I went with Midwest Industries. 
And Mid Midwest Industries makes their hand guards in both dimensions. They make a high or a low. So if you know what you have, uh, they, they make it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the, the barrel nut dimensions here, one and seven sixteenths. And that's 16 threads per inch. And once again, this part here, I'm not quite sure about, but the depth of your threads can be a little bit different between manufacturers. So once again, uh, barrel nuts and the type of handguard you use could be a consideration. Now, I don't know that for a fact on the DPMS standard, this, this may actually be a standard dimension, but I seem to run across something uh, to where that can change. And then just to verify what I had, I this is my uh, thread pitch gauge 16 and it, it fits very nice. So the other thing was I was looking at Rock River Arms for their uh, hand guards and their barrel nuts and they have a note saying that the way they cut their threads, even though that, that might be 16 threads per inch, they said that they either don't cut their threads as deep or they cut them deeper. And that may cause an issue with some aftermarket barrel nuts. And so they strongly recommend that you only use their barrel nut and their handguard on their receivers. So uh, how true all that is, I don't know. But if they put a note in it, they put a note about it, I, I'll, I'll take their word for it. Okay, so once again, you, you figured out what receiver you got. You, you've got the right uh, height handguard. There's another thing that you kind of got to watch out for, especially on these billet um, uppers. And a lot of these handguards that have uh, rotation tabs that fit around the outside of the receivers, that's, that's something else you got to watch out for to make sure that, that that's going to fit. And another reason that I went with Midwest Industries on their handguard was their anti-rotation, they have a block that fits down over the top of the, uh, the gas tube. And that slides into the opening of the rail on the handguard, and that provides your, your anti-rotation. So using the Midwest Industries handguard, I don't have to worry about uh, anti-rotation tabs and whether they're going to fit on the outside of this receiver or not. Okay, so everything on this receiver with uh, one exception, is AR-308 specific, meaning everything's bigger, longer, fatter, whatever. And um, But there is one, one spot that uses a standard AR-15 mil spec uh, part, and that's the uh, forward assist. So this uses an AR-15 uh, forward assist mechanism and hardware. And you can see on this receiver, uh, we're using a, uh, a threaded roll pin. So anyway, I think that kind of covers everything that I, I think I know about the AR-308 or LR-308. Like I said, I'm not going to call this an AR-10, even though a lot of other people and manufacturers and, and sellers do. So anyway, I just got a, a phone call from uh, Frontier, from New Frontier. My uh, lower receiver is ready to pick up, so we'll be doing another video on that. Uh, speaking of videos... Um, I won't be able to show a whole lot of assembly on this because of YouTube's uh, issues with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment and their, their censorship problems. But um, what I'm planning on doing is uh, I'll make separate videos of the actual assembly and installation, and then uh, we'll post those to Rumble. And so when I get to that part, uh, I'll let you guys know on YouTube. And then, uh, But anyway, this is probably about as far as I can go on YouTube. Without, without the snowflakes melting. All right, well, I'm going to go pick up that lower. Pete in North Las Vegas, over and out.